Hello everybody, welcome to Mercy Cafe and I am Sky Ortigas and I will be your moderator for today. So I hope that you're all well and good and uh, I'm, think I'm thankful that you're here with us right now. So before anything, I would just like to um, introduce what Mercy Cafe is. Mercy Cafe is actually a program of Youth Pinoy. What we do is that we are going to every cafe po sa mga different cafes here in Metro Manila. And uh, usually every month, nagkakaroon po kami ng parang um, teachings about anything about life. Mercy Cafe is, is actually um, a program for the youth and for the young professionals. So we have different, uh, may kita niyo po sa picture online, um, mga different um, activities po ng Mercy Cafe. We invite different speakers, we invite um, different um, priests and the key speakers to talk to us anything about life. So the last time we have how to be courageous, how to be strong, how to be brave. We also talk about the theology of the body. And right now, as we are here online, we are launching this show online. And let's talk about what is happening in our lives right now. Um, sa nangyayaring pandemic, Next, it's time for us to... Um, be reminded how um, the Lord is working in our lives right now. Okay, so we have two very special guests. Ang una ko pong tatawagin guest ay uh, isa sa mga uh, napaka-sikat na priest dito sa community natin, dito sa Catholic Church in the Philippines. He has a show called Almosaleta. Let us all welcome Father Luciano Feloni. Hello, Father. Hi, hello, good afternoon. Kamusta hello po? po, kamusta po kayo, Father? Mabuti naman, mabuti naman. Hello, hello din sa mga nanonood sa ating live. Okay, so ngayon po, Father, kung may kita niyo, dalawa po yung screen ko kasi may tinitingnan ako sa mga comments natin sa ating uh, audience. We're actually live now po sa different Facebook pages. We are live in CBCP News. We are live in Youth Pinoy. We are live in Mercy Cafe um, Facebook pages. So, maraming areas po na live tayo for today. Also in Almosalita, so, we are Wow, we are also live in Almosalita. Napakagandang, napakagandang, uh, ano naman, napakagandang, um, ways for us to be live right now in different in different um, Facebook pages. Ayan. So, Father, magandang hapon po sa inyo. Nasaan po ngayon ngayon? Nasa aking bahay. Sa aking bahay. Kauli um, ko lang, um, uh, um, meeting, nag-meeting kami ng mga pare ng aming bikariato, uh, preparing for the opening of masses sa lunes. So nagkaroon kami ng seminar, uh, live, uh, Facebook live seminar para sa lahat ng servants ng aming mga anim na parokya. And so kauwi ko lang sa bahay ngayon. Ayun. Um, so basically Father, uh, basically, Father, you'll be opening the churches from June 1, tama ba? Yes, opening the churches. Pero habang wala pang ibang uh, advice from the government, yung magiging allowed lang ay sampung tao bawat misa. So, sa ngayon, yun muna, sampung tao lang. So, okay. So, ngayon, Father, tanong lang, bago tayo pumunta sa sharing ninyo, um, sa church nyo ba, sa parish nyo, ilang, magkakaroon ba kayo ng additional masses since it's, since it's only 10 people per mass lang yung allowed? Uh, magkakaroon ng dalawang bagay. Number one is yung Sunday mass, Usually, anticipated lang is Sawadon ng gabi. But this time, the bishop will allow from Wednesday ng gabi, every evening, Wednesday ng gabi, Jueves ng gabi, Viernes ng gabi, at saka Sabado buong hapon, all that will be anticipated masses. So, we will have uh, oh. several extra masses for that. Uh, pagdating ng Sunday, wow, that... yes, pagdating ng Sunday, hindi pwede masyadong dagdaga ng mga misa dahil uh, we have to keep two hours uh, in between so that may time for disinfection. So, alimbawa, pag nag mm. ka ng 6 a.m., yun next mass, hindi pwede alas 7, has to be alas 8, para mayroon time para mag-disinfect yung church. So, 
On Sunday, we will have mass like six, six eight, ten, twelve, two, four. And then uh, the same on Saturday, and then Friday, Thursday, and Wednesday ng gabi. All that will be Sunday mass. Wow. Um, that's something new for our church, no? Kasi simula pa lang ng Wednesday, eh, magkakaw na pala ng anticipated mass. So that's something new for our, um, the, for the faithful to look out for. So basically, that's in Quezon City. We don't know if, it's, if, it, if it will happen also in other areas. So let's all watch out for that. And ngayon naman, Father, siguro I would just like to ask, ano po ang mga, mga um, ginawa niyong um, pag-cope pag -cope during this pandemic? Kayo as a parish, please, and kayo din. And considering that uh, you're also a foreigner here in the Philippines, di ba? So parang you're just assigned here. So ano ang ginawa niyong pag-cope dito sa pandemic na ito? Uh, well, um, first of all, sumunod sa mga direktiba ng ating gobyerno. So, uh, that means na for the past two and a half months, nasa bahay ako practically all the time. Um, so, mahirap sa umpisa kasi hindi sanay mag stay sa bahay lang, hindi sanay na hindi lumalabas, hindi sanay na walang misa, uh, hindi sanay na walang meetings, hindi sanay na ganon. So, Yung umpisa, medyo shocking, medyo na mahira mag-adjust. Uh, but eventually, na-kick in yung, uh, yung creativity na hindi po pwede hanggang dyan lang. At uh, naging malaging tulong din na may experience ako sa social media before the pandemic. So, yun. Ang nangyari is uh, tuloy ang misa. We have two masses online every day in our parish. Uh, we have uh, recollections and formation seminars uh, live on Facebook. Uh, we started a month ago to have a meeting of the pastoral council using Zoom, meeting of the staff na parokya using Zoom, meeting na mga ministries using Zoom. So na transform more into uh, more into uh, using technology, pero panatilihin yung uh, togetherness. And at the same time, of course, isa sa mga challenge ng parokya ko was how to reach out to to the poor families that are majority in my parish. So my parish is uh, Barangay Commonwealth in Batasan. Uh, karamihan ng mga tao doon ay uh, no work, no pay. Yeah, heavily affected. So nag-organize kami din ng campaign online uh, to adopt a family. And then uh, using minimal uh, volunteers na distribute yung ayuda sa mga areas. So parang sumatotal, nag-stay sa bahay, sumunod sa patakaran. But at the same time, through technology, was able to reach out sa mga tao. Right now, Father, how do you appreciate technology? Like, kasi before na alala ko, you will all, you were always telling us that you don't know Facebook, you don't know how to do Facebook. You are just using, you have your youth there, yung mga kabataan yun na talagang tumutulong sa inyo para makapag magkaroon kayo ng almusalita, no? So how how do you appreciate technology right now as part of our evangelization ministry? Well, I I really appreciate it very much since I started with almusalita four years ago. Uh, nung nagsimula ako, talaga I didn't know how to use a lot of things. Pero as uh, time goes by, uh, natuto ako ng marami. So ngayon, I, I use a lot of applications. Um, I conduct a lot of webinars. I, I, uh, I explore different platforms for uh, live streaming and for uh, virtual meetings. And so I had to sort of investigate and learn on my own. <laughs> Um, but at the same time, malaking tulong na for four years I have been uh, active in social media. So, yun po yung naging uh, tulong sa akin, kumbaga, yung masses online, it's, I have been already four years doing it. Kaya hindi kami nagbago, no nag-transform into ito lang ang pwede ang online. Already we had uh, the, the technology and the setup ready for, uh, for that, for the online activities. So it was not really um uh, hindi ganun kahirap for on your part when it comes to 
learning the ropes baga on online yes. online ministry correct it, hindi siya hindi siya mahirap in the sense ng learning yung technology yung mahirap na parte sa amin siguro ganun din sa inyo mga laiko sa inyo yung mahirap is uh, not going to mass not receiving Jesus in the mm-hmm. Eucharist sa amin naman bilang pare saying the mass without people so yun yun, yun na mahirap eh yung yung physically You, you, you prepare the homily, pero yung kaharap mo is yung camera. Kasi wala kang congregation, wala kang tao na. So, that part is difficult. Emotionally difficult. Uh, technologically, hindi siya difficult kasi uh, sanay na kami, noong pa'y ginagawa. But uh, emotionally, is very different. Kasi dati, pag nagmimisa ako, uh, I was saying the mass for the whole church. Tapos, andyan lang yung camera. But yung minisahan, yung tao, tapos may camera, may, may nanonood online. But now, nagmimisa ko mag-isa. So mag-isa ko sa kwarto, tapos may camera. Uh, I have to develop a deeper faith na, na sa likod ng camera, may talagang tao. But emotionally, is, uh, it was difficult. How did you deal with that, Father? Um, with that difficulty, with that challenge na, na, na wala kang congregation? How did you cope up with that? How did you cope with that? Well, I, I tried to maximize yung, maximize yung contact, uh, yung online contact. So, yung, um, yung messaging, yung private message, un- answering to messages, join, joining conversations online, organizing meetings. Kasi sa umpisa, na-paralyze ang lahat. So, for the first uh, a month or so, na wala ang lahat, walang walang seminars, walang um, mm. na wala yung meetings, na wala ang lahat. Yung natira sa akin was yung mass online and then my programs on Radio Veritas. So that was the only thing na natira. But then eventually we came out of that paralysis at nagsimula, teka muna, kung hindi pwede mag-meeting na face to face, let's Zoom meeting and at the same time, we can meet each other, share idea, etc. So, yun ang nangyari. And uh, I like it. I like it not nag open up to the second phase. Na unti-unti na sana yung tao. Pati yung parishioners ko, na yung iba ay hindi talaga teki, yung iba ay hindi talaga marunong, na, naghanap ng tumulong sa kanila, basta maging konektado. Um, how do you feel, Father, when uh, when you see um, pictures on Facebook na nago online mas yung mga uh, yung, the lady, yung mga faithful natin? Yeah, I'm very very happy to see that that kind of pictures na yung buong family. Uh, nangyari kasi is dumami first dumami yung mga nagsimba araw-araw. Yun na isang bagay na napansin uh, ng lahat ng pare. Uh, dumami as in like yung my daily mass for example around 2000 yung nanonood on on the spot live so uh, kapag nagmisa ko sa parokya hindi kanyang karami yung daily church goer so napansin po lahat ng pare dumami yung nagsisimba araw-araw pangalawa dumami yung mga families na nagsimba bilang pamilya which is something beautiful so uh, napaka sarap makita na somehow imbes na imbes na nagsara ang simbahan nag-open ng maraming simbahan yung domestic churches dumami dumami yung simbahan sa tahanan um do you think father there will there will be a different definition right now of what the church is or naiba ba yung definition kung ano talaga yung simbahan ngayon or parang na nag nagano lang nag nag nabalik lang sa tunay na definition what the church really is. Hindi. Hindi naman magbabago yung definition ng simbahan. And that will never change. nag evolve yung, uh, yung, uh, yung etsura, yung format. But uh, they, they uh, ano eh, hindi magbabago kailanman. No? Yung, yung church will always be people that come together uh, called by God. So yung, yung pagtitipon ng, ng bayan ng Diyos na tinawag niya, na nagtipon-tipon dahil sa kanya, yun po yung pinaka-puso uh, ng simbahan 
na hindi magbabago. And also, I was reflecting na hindi naman new. I mean, for the first 100 years or more, we didn't have churches at yung tao ay nag, uh, tipon-tipon sa bahay. So, domestic church was the first church before we had big churches. We had gatherings at home. So, it's nothing new actually. It's a uh, it's like going back to to the roots to the beginnings father what uh, how about your parish workers what um kamusta naman po sila um when it, especially right now ano po yung mga preparations niyo pag nag gcq na po tayo well uh, there is a lot of uh, protocols of uh, as a church um from the disinfection mats um uh, hand sanitizer, um, the offices are to be open, but we have uh, plastic uh, divisions, uh, skeletal uh, workforce, uh, at mayroon din work from home mula sa ating mga empleyado. So there is a lot of set of protocols about health and sanitation na ini-implement. So sa ngayon, full preparation kami marking ng church for uh, yung mga separation ng physical distance, um, preparing the forms kasi every mass people will have to register for contact tracing. So maraming magbabago sa, sa ating, uh, sa itsura ng ating simbahan. Ayun. So thank you so much, Father. And for those who are watching, um, pwede kayong mag-question, mag mag-ask questions. So late, later, um, tatanungin natin si Father sa kanyang mga experiences pa. And right now, we have also another guest. Let us all welcome um, someone who is a frontliner. She's a nurse and she's also a member of Youth Pinoy right now. Ang maganda, alam mo Father, maganda ang story nito kasi she was just recently, she recently got married nung January lang. And since she's a nurse, nung February ay eh, nagkaroon ng pandemic. Nag-start na po yung pandemic, yung lockdown. So ano yung mga experiences niya as a newly married person and at the same time as a frontliner. So let us uh, all um, welcome uh, Mrs. Berna Manipon Lakina. Hello, Berna! Hi, everyone! Hello, Ate Sky! Hello, Father! <laughs> Hello. Hello po. Magandang hapon po sa lahat. Ayan. Good thing na hindi ka naka-duty ngayon. Yes. Hindi ako duty. Off po. Off. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. Um, um, ngayon, I would just like to ask Berna certain questions. Certain questions no, sa kanyang experience ngayong pandemic na ito. Berna, how are you? How are you as a nurse and at the same time as a newly married woman? Ah, uh, ang daming changes. Akala ko magko-cope lang ako dun sa married life, magta-transition from being single to being married. Pero sumabay nga actually yung pandemic. There, actually, at Sky, there were moments nung nagsisimula yung pandemic, nung nag-start yung GCQ, na hindi ako makauwi sa bahay. Uh, nasa dorm ako ng hospital for more than three weeks, I think, na hindi ako makauwi. Moments were in... Uh, inaaway ko na yung asawa ko kasi hindi nila ako masundo sa ospital. Kasi wala naman talaga silang way. Kahit na may private car, walang, uh, wala silang way para mag-cross mag from one region to the other. So, nagsasabi ako sa kanya na baka pag ano, nagkasakit na ako, namatay na talaga ako dito, hindi nyo ako mapupunta. Yung mga ganong drama. <laughs> kasi sobrang, ano, sobrang yun yung time na I felt so alone. Uh, share ko lang din, yun din yung moment na first time kong naka-experience ng online mass. Kung si Father Feloni, sanay na siya na nakaharap sa computer at magmamas, ako first time kong maka-experience ng online mass. I transitioned from from the last mass I had dito sa parish namin, dito sa Imus, to an online platform. Tapos mag-isa pa ako dun sa dorm ko after ng duty. Yun yung mga mga time na we're in, some of our, yung mga colleagues namin in the medical field were also struggling because they have the same disease. Sobrang, I felt so alone. And 
honestly, I just found myself crying. Hindi ako sanay. Kulang. Kulang siya sa akin. Uh, yun yung panahon na nagsa-struggle ka rin kasi yung ibang mga kasama mo sa field, uh, nabalitaan mo, intubated, you were praying for them, you're longing for for Jesus, you're longing for God, and yet, hindi ka makareceive ng communion. It was very, very new to me. Kaya sobra yung naging struggle ko, and yung mahiwalay ka sa asawa mo, kakasal mo lang, tapos wala din siya sa tabi mo. Yung best time we're in, sana nandun siya, pero wala rin siya. Kasi kailangan niyang i-quarantine yung sarili rin niya at hindi rin ako maka So, sobrang bago talaga. Sobrang struggle. <laughs> it was a different experience. It was a different newly married honeymoon experience, I guess, yes. for, for you. <laughs> something something for the books, no? Um, and Berna, uh, by the way, for the information of everyone, Berna is working as a nurse in one of the... Um, uh, hospitals here in Manila that is really specializing in the COVID-19 pandemic. So, may kita mo talagang nandun siya online, frontline siyang um, tumutulong at uh, nagsuserve, no? So, Berna, when when you see all these things happening, how do how do you look at yourself? How do you look at the present moment? Uh, actually, nung una ate, nung nagko-quarantine, uh, nakita ko yung sarili ko na lumalaban mag-isa. <laughs> Kasi wala kang, ano, wala kang, uh, wala kang someone from your family or your friends. Ang kasama mo yung colleagues mo, yes, you're not physically alone. But every time that I will, that uh, I will, um, I will be with the patient because there were moments na sobrang andami ng pasyente na isa ka sa magta-transfer ng isang positive case where in your on the back of the ambulance you're wear, you're wearing the full PPE tas init na init ka tas nandun yung pasyente na alam mo na positive ita-transfer mo siya sa isang ospital kasi dalawang bagay uh, hindi na siya kaya ng hospital nyo dahil puno na kayo or pangalawa dahil mas alam mo na matutu- mas matutugunan yung uh, pangangailangan nyo ng ibang ospital. Ang hirap kasi uh, pinuput mo yung sarili mo dun sa danger. Alam mo na ikaw sarili mo, kakasal ko lang Lord. Gusto ko pang magkaroon ng baby. Gusto ko pang lumaki yung pamilya namin. Pero nandun at the same time, yung puso mo na dapat mag-serve, dapat gawin mo in. Kasi yun yung, yun yung tawag ng trabaho mo. Yun yung uh, sinumpaan mo na trabaho na dapat ibibigay mo dun sa mga pasyente. So, uh, ano siya? Uh, sobrang, sobrang hirap niya. May mga pagkakataon niya uh, at is kay na uh, minsan nanana, nananaginip na ako sa patients ko. So, sobrang stress and anxiety ko. There were moments where in my husband, I remember after three weeks na, na, na nakaka-uwi na ako sa bahay, na sinasabi ng husband ko na nagsasalita ako in my sleep because of my anxiety. Ganong level yung stress ko, yung worry mo na kapag pupunta ka actually sa bahay, uwi ka, hindi ka agad, uh, hindi ka agad papasok ng bahay. Hindi mo sila mayayaka because one, magpapahinga ka sa labas kasi kailangan maligo ka muna. You need to remove all your outside clothes muna, ge, uh, mag-wash ka muna bago ka fully mak- makapasok sa bahay at makasama mo sila. Kahit na nasa loob ka actually ng bahay, nagsa-struggle ka because you have your own utensils, scent of utensils. O orient mo yung mga tao sa bahay. O ito yung pinggan ko, ito yung, ito yung spoon and fork ko, ito yung inuman ko, wag yung gagamitin, isi-separate mo yun. May mga times na kakain kami by batches, e- even in our homes. Kakain kami in our batches na ganyan. Kasi ayaw mo na ayaw mo na mahawahan sila kung nagdala ka man actually na sakit. So, mahirap siya kasi magsuserve ka at mahirap siya para sa pamilya mo kasi uh, ayaw mo na mahawahan din sila kasi nung mga posib- kung possible mo siyang madadala sa bahay mo. So, yung anxiety, hindi lang dito, pati dito, di ba? Hindi, hindi lang sa mind mo, pati sa puso mo may, may anxiousness ka. Kaya, importante na uh, nakakapit ka dun sa spiritual faith mo. And I think my family and friends, including you, at Sky, uh, you were one of those people that allowed me na makapag-share yung pagsasalita actually about the experience helps as a form of therapy to cope dito sa pandemic na to. So, Berna, um, 
sinabi mo nga no, parang emotionally din mahirap for you. How did you, what what are the steps that you did to cope with all these things? Hindi ko kaya na mag-isa. Kaya nakatulong talaga yung family, friends, including my colleagues at work uh, with the same faith. Sa pamilya, my husband really has been one of the uh, reminders para magdasal. Kasi pag, actually, pag uuwi ka sa bahay, ako gusto ko magpahinga na lang. Uh, pag, pag umuwi ako sa bahay, ako yung ko nang makinig ng news. <laughs> Kasi ayoko na ng stressor. So kapag kakain ako, gusto ko movie, very light, mga comedy yung pinapanood. And kapag nagpapahinga ka na, yung, yung husband ko actually nagpapaalan, oh, let's pray together. The Divine Mercy actually really helps kasi yun yung nagiging point wherein uh, alam ko na in the mercy of God ako palagi. Uh, yung tulong din ng friends kasi sila yung nagde-brief sa iyo especially kapag nasa ano ka pag nasa uh, hospital ka kasi nagtatawanan kami together yan when you share the same faith tapos yung experience namin there was one time pa na night duty ako na nanood kami ng mass ni Pope Francis sa isang malaking uh, 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 monitoring screen because we monitor the news then uh, sa uh, hospital. Doon kami nanonood, nanonood kami ng mass together and it was a different experience actually na na makita mo na uh, yung use of technology. So, ayun, uh, yun din yung panahon actually na I saw how how everyone could be gifts. Alam mo yung andami mong worry eh, paano ako kakain, uh, paano ka mag, paano ka pupunta ng hospital, yung transportation, uh, from the time na hindi ako nakaka-uwi, I found a person that I can carpool with. Yung mga, yung food na dadalin mo kasi uh, hindi rin tuloy-tuloy yung stream ng, ng deliveries. Noong una, may nagpe-pledge for lunch, tapos dinner, hanggang sa magugulat ka na lang. May breakfast ka na, may AM snack, may lunch, may PM, may dinner ka pa. Doon ko naramdaman actually yung, yung, uh, com- yung companionship, yung Pagtutulungan ng bawat isa, when all of my worries turned uh, little by little ay nawawala. Na yung, yung quarantine was an opportunity for, for everyone to be a gift. So, yung family, friends, and colleague ko talaga yung, ano, yung nakatulong. Really, God knows how to make something na malungkot at at nagsa-struggle into a beautiful experience. This is this is really something that you can tell your future children to about it, di ba? And uh, ang nakakatuwa lang, Burns, no, with you, kasi dati, um, naalala ko, um, Berna and I have been really good friends for a very long time already. And Berna was always, dati, nagkikwento yan sa amin na, uh, na parang, um, bakit daw masyadong wala ng faith sa hospital, yung mga hindi mo na na hindi na niya si-share ang kanyang Catholic faith with her colleagues. But right now, what she is sharing with us is that marami, sila din mismo, makikita mo nagdadasal na rin yung mga frontliners natin. So, nakakatawa. We have comments pala from our different from frontliners are also watching with us. There's one comment from um, uh, Miss L.V. Roberts. Sabi niya nakakatawa daw ang mga frontliners. Super hirap talaga po kasi. Frontline din siya sa UK. So, so um, she is uh, um, giving a hand, a clap to all the frontliners. So, na, uh, thankful tayo. Kahit may mga aso dyan sa bahay ni na Berna. <laughs> so, <laughs> thank you. Thankful tayo sa lahat ng frontliners. And Berna, anong, uh, anong nakikita mong difference right now with the environment in the hospitals and at the same time, um, when it comes to your faith being uh, um, shared dyan sa, sa line of work mo? Ang pagbabago, how how everyone actually manages to put a smile on their face. <laughs> Alam mo yung minsan, uh, pag nasa hospital actually, uh, nag, nag-physical distancing din kasi eh. We always wear masks. Tapos kapag nagsisitahan yung bawat isa, oh, social distancing kayo kasi ang lalapit yun na sa isa't isa. Yung how we manage na gawin yung something na nakakastress, na nakakatuwa lang. Ah, uh, isa pa sa pinaka nakakatuwa is uh, kahit na late kang umuuwi, 
kahit na mag-walk ka sa street ng halos mag-isa, actually nakikita ko na lang yung mga barangay tanod sa amin, uh, I feel so secured na kahit mag-isa kang naglalakad, alam ko na may tumitingin sa'yo at nagagabay. I think it's different from the other frontliners' experience. Alam mo yung mababalitaan na sinabuyan ng British and all. There was there were actually moments na I feel na 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 stigmatized din talaga ako. Yung pakiramdam na actually sa ano pa lang nung nasa ospital kami no. Ang hirap humanap ng accommodation sa ibang frontliners kasi syempre natatakot sila na i-accommodate yung mga nurses, yung mga other healthcare professional, 'di ba? Pero kakaiba yung experience sa uh, uh, iba namang frontliners kasi nandun naman dumagsa yung tulong. May mga nagdodonate ng bike uh, kasi yung bike culture pinopromote nila. May mga nagbibigay ng rosaries actually. Uh, minsan magugulat kami sa mga lunch boxes namin, may nagshare ng rosaries. Uh, meron din mga pagkakataon na nakaka-receive kami ng emails. Uh, about mental health, mental awareness. So yung yung pag yung nangyayari sa mundo allowed uh, allowed other people yung strengths nila to be to be a gift. Uh, yung allowed yung weaknesses actually ng ibang tao na maging strengths naman nila. Like kami, dahil nawala na yung worries namin about transpo, all the struggle pa rin yun, uh, about food. Hindi, dahil hindi na namin iniisip yon dahil alam namin na may darating na. So, nakakapag-focus into serving. Ayun. So, how how did your faith um, play the role in your life right now? How is how your, how your did your faith play? Um, ano yung mga nangyayari sa'yo? Sa mga nangyayari pala sa'yo ngayon, paano ang faith mo um, gumagabay sa'yo? Sabi ko nga, ano eh, uh, iba yung experience ng online mass. Pero at the same time, yung nakakatuwa kasi yung mga parokya also use the technology para mapalapit sa mga katulad namin, yung theology, other talks, and ganito, yung mga ganitong, uh, ganitong platforms, uh, nakakatulong talaga na ma-spiritual check kami. <laughs> Kasi uh, kapag napunta ka na sa ospital, mahirap maisip or mahirap unahin ang pagdadasal kapag nandun ka na sa kabisihan. Pero every time na naghihirap ka, yun yung mga pagkakataon na mas madaling, mas madaling humingi ng tulong sa kanya. Madaling mag-sign of the cross, madaling magdasal kapag nahihirapan. And I think yun yung regalo na meron ngayon, na dahil nahihirapan ng lahat, ito yung pagkakataon na ang bilis-bilis natin i-lift up lahat sa Panginoon. Sobrang nakatulong ang devotion with the Divine Mercy, with Mama Mary, uh, with you surround yourself with people of the same faith. Kasi kapag nahihirapan ka, you just share it with them. And yung ano, yung... Uh, alam mo na may nagdadasal sa iyo na iba. Actually nagugulat na lang ako na online may biglang mga ngamusta from the community uh, from the community of Copus for Christ actually because uh, I also belong there. Mga ngamusta na kamusta ka na Ate Bear na I'm praying for you. Sobrang nakakatuwa 'yon kasi ano 'yun eh um uh, nakakataba ng puso. Iba kasi kapag ibang tao yung nagdadasal. Kaya sobra yung hinihiling namin na dasal sa bawat isa. Really, if you, if nasa bahay kayo, you're, you're doing a job well done by staying at home. And sobra yung uh, thankfulness namin kung kasama sa pagsistay at home ninyo yung pagdadasal din sa amin. Kasi iba po talaga yung nagagawa ng dasal. Ayan. So thank you so much, Berna, and would like to bring back Father Filoni again with us. Ayan. Nanjam pa ba si Father? Ayan. Hello, yes. Father. Ayan. Hi. Okay. So right now, Father Sigal will entertain questions from our from our um 
audience right now. So, sa ating mga audience, um, Berna, ikaw, anong masasabi mo ngayon sa mga katulad mong frontliners na who are watching with us right now? Never lose hope. <laughs> Never lose hope that everything will be okay. Never lose hope that God listens, God will answer. Na lahat to matatapos na. <laughs> Alam ko nakakapagod yung struggle. Alam ko uh, nakaka nakakapagod magdasal na lahat ng tao sa mundo, <laughs> especially do sa direktiba na wag po wag lumabas ng bahay. Pero darating yung panahon, hindi man natin alam kung kailan, darating yung panahon that there will be a vaccine, a, me uh, a medicine, that it will happen, it will happen. Other countries were already uh, winning against COVID. And I, and I think dito sa Pilipinas, kailangan nung talaga maging aware ng bawat Pilipino dun sa responsibilidad nila. Alam mo yung triad of prevention, pinaka-importante na ano eh, pinaka-importante na... Lagi namin uh, sinasabi. So as a frontliner, sa kapwa frontliner, yun yung, yun yung gusto kong sabihin, never lose hope. Para naman sa kapwa Pilipino, I'll take this opportunity. Always uh, observe the triad of prevention. Hand hygiene, wash your hands with soap and water or alcohol. Always wear face mask, a cloth face covering, ayan, para takpan ng ating ilong kasama ang bibig ng buo. And of course, observe, observe yung physical distancing. Father, there's a question here from um, Zen Udani. Sabi niya, how can the parish reach out to the elderly who have not received the sacraments? Um, for two and a half months now, there's nothing compared to the actual sacraments. So right now, how can the parish reach out to the elderly? Especially sa mga senior citizens natin. Yes. Well, una sa lahat is uh, sa pamagitan ng, ng available na masses. No? Yung talagang malaking tulong yung online at napakaraming mga seniors ay nagsisimba online and sometimes nagsisimba ng three, four times kasi may maraming ano eh, may, may, may several masses sa parokya plus uh, nagsisimba sa iba't ibang misa. So, uh, yung, yung online is one way of reaching out at uh, eventually pag tayo ay mapunta sa uh, general community quarantine ay maaari ding uh, iikot yung ating mga lay ministers at magbibigay ng komunyon yung dating ginawa sa may sakit ngayon kasama kahit hindi may sakit kasama yung mga uh, hindi pwede magsimba ng physical that is 21 years below and 60 years and above so uh, yung pagbibigay ng komunyon sa kanila ay, sa mga bahay-bahay, that, that will be another another way. And also, uh, I think sila talaga ang magiging prayer warriors ng parokya. Mahalaga po ito. Mahalaga na uh, isipin natin na this is the time for the seniors to maybe to sacrifice, uh, to suffer a little themselves in order to protect others. No? Kasi oh, minsan, Ang iniisip is uh, yung, yung pagiging ano eh, palusot na hindi okay lang ako, malusok ako, pwede naman, uh, wala naman, eh, hindi naman malalaman, uh, lagi ako nagsisimba. I think this is the time na hindi maging makasarili tayo at isipin yung kapakanan ng iba kasi we are doing it so that other people will not be in danger. No? So at in, hindi lang ito senior, kahit uh, hindi senior, Kung, kung mayroong uh, another uh, comorbidity, another sakit na, na malala, diabetes, asthmatic, ingat lang, uh, extra ingat. Kaya uh, I think sila mismo dapat uh, manguna dito. And then, uh, ang lagi kong sinasabi sa mga, sa lahat ng tao, but lang lalo sa mga may iwan at home ngayon is be creative. Stay at home, it doesn't mean doing nothing. So, yun po yung natutunan ko. Stay at home, hindi equals doing nothing. Kaya, for example, if you are a member of the Legion of Mary, the level up po kayo, magpaturo kayo sa mga apo ninyo, you can still have the uh, prayer meeting together online. You can open a group chat. On the group chat, you can open your cameras. You can pray the rosary together. You can have sharing. So, uh, learn 
technology. This is the time na gamitin po yung technology, bigay ng Diyos yan para sa magandang paraan. So, if you don't know, learn. Huwag kang magtago sa excuse na I don't know. Hindi ako marunong gumamit. Pwes, matuto ka. Kasi this is a time na kung hindi mo alam at available, kailangan mong gawin. Alang-alang sa iba. So, I think uh, we will see more prayer meetings online. We will see more uh, ministry meetings online. And again, don't, don't just stay home. Now, uh, paano kung wala kong internet connection? Well, Radio Veritas has three masses a day. 6 a.m., 12 noon, and 6 p.m. Uh, we have masses on TV. So maraming paraan para uh, makapagsimba pa rin. And maraming paraan para maka-meeting din. Para magtipon-tipo, mag-share, but not necessarily physical. So ang aking payo sa mga senior citizens, huwag tayong palusot. Huwag tayong... Don't try to be the exception to the rule. Uh, although yung rule na ito ay hindi galing sa simbahan, galing sa gobyerno. But I think it's not a good uh, thing na ang simbahan ang pinaka uh, nakahanam ng palusot. At dapat talaga mag-lead by example tayo. No? Tayo ang unang this time mag-lead by example. Ayan, totoo yan. So sa mga nanonood sa atin ng mga, mga seniors, sa mga elderly, so ang sabi po ni Father is huwag tayo magpalusot. At I think, Father, it's not, only for, it's not only for the seniors, but also for all of us who are watching right now. Kasi minsan, akala natin okay lang, tayo naman, wala naman tayong sakit or wala naman tayong symptoms, but it's also for the good of everybody. So if we are told to physical distance ourselves, then we should do that. Diba? And uh, para lang ma, ma-flatten natin to Lalo na especially na on June 1st, eh, magiging, magiging uh, more um, more flexible na lahat siguro because of the GCQ. So, um, ano po ang pwede nating masabi, like uh, Berna, sa mga nanonood sa atin, on how we could still um, continue to to make this uh, fight um na ma- ma- ma-flatten pa natin yung curve at hindi mag-spike ulit? Uh, ngayon kasi medyo ma- nagsastruggle tayo when releasing of cases, no? I think kahapon na, na panood nyo na rin yung news na naglabas ang DOH ng fresh cases at yung mga late reported cases kasi kailangan habulin yung validation of the positive cases. Uh, so, ako honest, hindi ko pa makita yung kung nafa-flatten na ba yung curve but I pero naniniwala ako na yung ginagawa natin is flattening the curve. Paano pa natin magagawa yun? Number one, syempre, uh, kung lalabas ng bahay, siguraduhin na essential ang gagawin. Uh, hindi, ay, sinabi nga ni Father, hindi ka, uh, marami kang gaw, pwedeng gawin sa bahay. Uh, use your faith, share your faith online. Uh, kung gusto mong mag-vlog, kung paano kung paano gamitin yung skills mo, do it. Kung magaling ka sa computer, yun yung gawin mo. Uh, marami kang pwedeng gawin na ibang advokasiya. One of the things na sobrang nagustuhan ko, kasi some of my friends din, na walang sila ng work actually sa hospital, they are still doing yung lahat ng makakaya nila. And meron na sobrang galing mag- magluto. So they are volunteering every week nagpupul sila ng fund, uh, nagluluto sila, and then yun yung sineshare nila. Uh, share your time, talents, and treasure in the most creative way, sabi nga. And kung, kung lalabas ka, I think it will also help na wag na po tayong magsuot ng gloves. <laughs> Ayan, nakikita ko yan sa mga supermarket. Ito mga practical po na tips, no? It's better to have your pocket alcohols with you. And every time na meron kang hahawakan, perform your hand hygiene. Kesa po, naka-gloves ka. Kasi pag naka-gloves ka, gives you a false security na clean yung kamay mo. And yet, yung gloves mo na contaminated, na humawak sa isang contaminated, na hinawak mo ulit sa isang bagay, yung pala nagkakaroon na ng cross-contamination. So, mas maganda po talaga na mag-alcohol at huwag magsuot nun. And of course, always uh, wear your uh, mask. Any, any cloth mask will do. 
Uh, kung wala kang cloth mask, uh, pwede kang... Maraming mga actually na mga DIY. Yung mga skills nila, may friend din ako sobrang galing magtahe. May ginawa siyang DIY for mask. And she share niya yun. And of course, yung ano, physical distancing. Yan. Yun yung kasi yung pinaka-importante talaga na lagi nating may isip. Ayan, may maganda tayong comment dito. Um, siguro kailangan nyo marinig to, Father and Berna. Sabi niya, ni Miss Katrina Camacho, sabi niya, before every October lang daw kami nakakapag-rosary. Because of this pandemic, we we are family prays together every night. So, nakakatuwa din na, na ang prayer time natin, eh, mas naging together, no, as a family. Na minsan ang mga families really, like, have a scheduled time to pray so, kami din ng mga friends ko, we have a scheduled time na 8 o'clock na rosary kami online. So, nakakatawa that there are people who are really, really praying right now and together are praying. So, Father, sa inyong sa parish mo ba, Father? Ano yung mga um, nakikita mong uh, faithful experience, faith experience ng mga parishioners mo ngayon? Well, yung praying together the family talaga that's something uh, new sa marami kasi Kahit yung mga pamilya na aktibo, silang lahat sa simbahan, bihira yung sabay nagsisimba. So that's uh, something na dahil sa, sa pandemic, na sanay sila uh, mag-pray the rosary every day, uh, go to mass every day. So that was a, a powerful experience. Then I had a couple of powerful experiences. One was during Holy Week, uh, nilabas po namin yung Blessed Sacrament. Uh, three times to in procession to the streets and it was very very touching to see the, the people come to the uh, door of their houses and kneel down uh, in front of the blessed sacrament passing by so well, that was very powerful uh, experience um, that I, I have seen in, in the parish young hunger and also young feeling blessed to see kind to see the Blessed Sacrament passing by. That was very powerful. And another thing was during Palm Sunday, um, I, I, I had that intuition before the Mass. I said, I will bless the water. But then I asked the, the father of the house to bless uh, the palms no, in their house. So, marami nagpadala ng picture na the family na may, may dalang uh, palaspas. Tapos yung tatay ng pamilya was blessing the palace pass, no? And so, for several occasions, I, I asked the, the fathers, sige, kayo ang Paris priest doon sa bahay nyo. So, you guide the family in prayer, you will, I, I will bless water now online, tapos, kayo naman magbasbas sa pamilya nyo, mga ganon. And that was very powerful uh, sign, to, to see the families, again, getting together, praying together, and the father of the family guiding the prayer, mga bagay na matagal na wala, matagal na, na hindi nakikita. No? And so it was good talaga. Ito yung mga blessings na hindi mo inaasahan na darating, but dumating no, sa ating. Ayan. So, um, Father, siguro maganda ding way ito, especially tomorrow, we are celebrating Pentecost Sunday. Yes. So, um, I think uh, Pentecost is actually tinatawag natin the birthday of the Catholic Church, di ba? Na parang um, the fire the fire of God's love, the Holy Spirit ay mapupunta sa atin. So, ano ang mga, mga pwede natin gawin to have another faithful experience? Uh, again, a very good Catholic experience, especially as we celebrate Pentecost Sunday tomorrow. Mm-hmm. Well, I, I think... Uh... The Gospel of Tomorrow, maganda, no? Yung, yung parang ito ay yung pagbigay ng Espiritu Santo ni Jesus hindi sa araw ng Pentecostes, kundi sa resurrected Jesus, kung, kung kailan siya nag over the disciple. That's another version of the giving of the Holy Spirit. And uh, there are two or three very powerful uh, messages of Jesus in that Gospel. Number one is uh, kapayapaan. Kahit magulo, kahit magulo ang sitwasyon, kahit magulo yung, uh, yung sa labas. Remember, when Jesus appeared to the disciples, they were home quarantine dahil takot na takot na sa mga hudyo. Sila ay inuusik and they, they just killed Jesus and they were the next 
supposed to be to be killed and 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 yet the lord came and, and told them mm -hmm. okay I, i cannot change that situation what i can change is your heart so don't let your hearts be troubled have peace peace that, that that's the first thing you cannot change the pandemic it's not in our power but we can change our hearts we we can Uh, stop the turmoil in our heart and put peace. That's the first one. The second is a mission. Jesus said, as the Father sent me, so I'm sending you. So you, you live with a mission. You don't live because hindi ka patay. Hindi ganun ho yung hindi. It's not survival. We, survival is not living. And I think it's important kasi ngayong panahon ng pandemic, yung tukso is mag-survive. Uh, what can I do to survive the COVID pandemic? We are not meant to survive. We, we are meant to live, to live fully. So, and, and the only thing that can make you live fully is when you, when you don't try to just survive, but you live with a mission. Important yun eh. You live with a mission. So for everyone, uh, for the nurse or the doctor that goes every day to the front line, If you don't have a mission, if you don't see it as a mission, it's useless. For the senior citizen that decide, I will not go to mass, kahit takam na takam ako magsimba, pero alang-alang sa pamilya ko, I will just sacrifice a little more. And, and, and you do it as a mission. Staying home can be a mission. So I think for all of us, we, you have to discover what's your mission now, here and now. We are not called to survive. COVID-19. We are called to live fully, to live with purpose, to live with uh, talagang makabuluhan in the time na ito. So mission is the second word. And the third word is forgiveness. She said, as, as I forgive you, then you forgive others. I give you the power to forgive. Because otherwise you will be always bitter, you will be always Uh, without peace, you will be always struggling in your life. Until you decide to forgive, you cannot be a happy person. So I hope that Pentecost can bring again these three powerful words in our life. Very, very important to have peace, kahit hindi maayos ang labas. Yung loob ay pwedeng mapayapa. Not to survive, but to live with a mission and to decide to forgive because we are forgiven. And so, Uh, this is not a good time to 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 hold to our uh, yung samana loob, yung galit, yung tampo. This is time to really uh, free the heart from all that. Ayan. So ang napakaganda nung sinabi ni Father, no, it's uh, it's to do not let your hearts be troubled. And I think we all need, still need to live with a mission in our hearts. And that is to proclaim the gospel anytime kahit nasa loob kayo ng bahay. So, Berna, um, ano yung masasabi natin dyan with that kind of inspiration na binigay ni Father Saloni? Amen. <laughs> Sobra. Uh, na Iba kapag ano eh, iba kapag nakakarinig ka ng ganun. Kaya sobrang na natutuwa ako sa mga parokya na really uses the technology that we have ngayon para mapalapit yung salita ng Diyos sa mga katulad namin, especially namin mga frontliners na sobrang kailangan yung ganung nourishment. I remember na napag-uusapan namin ng husband ko, paano kaya kapag ano, nakapagmas na talaga tayo? Siguro kapag tinanong ako ng, ng pare, the body of Christ, Iba yung pagkakasabi ko ng amen, ibang longing. Yung pag nagsabi ako, nagbanggit ako ng amen at marireceive ko na talaga siya. And every time I look forward to that very moment. But at the same time, I feel so thankful na we have this technology actually na na, na helps to to really have our spiritual um, nourishment on check, our spiritual compass on the right track. Ayun. So, um, thankful tayo sa ating mga frontliners na, na mga nurses, mga doctors, and all the essential workers. And at the same time, thankful din kami sa mga frontliners namin spiritually, kina Father, for keeping us uh, 
um, keeping us uh, really inspired of the things that that is of the things that are happening right now. Hindi nyo lang po alam, Father, kung gaano din kami nahihirapan, nagsa struggle, na hindi kami makapagmas. But uh, with the help of you, na talagang nag gumawa ng lahat para makapag online mas kami, nakakatuwa na at least um, kahit sa ganong experience, may experience pa rin namin yung sacrament. Kasi um, sabi ko nga, kahit, kahit, an, kahit whatever it takes just for us to experience the sacrament, we will really um, do it, ba diba? So kahit mag-physical distance man, kahit sa TV man lang, pero pag na-experience namin, na alam namin spiritually kasama namin si God, um, I think, I believe that we can cope with all these things that are happening to us right now. And the uh, and the uh, naka um and yung tomorrow na celebration ng Pentecost Sunday it's actually also a moment for us kasi tamang tama no di ba nung nag ang Pentecost Sunday eh sinabi din ni God na lumabas kayo lahat pero sana naman yung paglabas natin <laughs> eh hindi lang paglabas ng bahay but at the same time the outpouring of our hearts to other people especially to us to our frontliners and to our elderly and to the people who is around us so Maraming maraming salamat, Father Filone and Berna, for giving us this chance to talk to you. And uh, thank you for inspiring us. And at the same time, to everyone who is watching, pasensya na if we have some audio difficulty, we will try to to make sure na next time magkakaroon tayo ng mas magandang stream, no? So, um, thank you so much for watching. And at the same time, um, uh, I think we're, we're going to have Mercy Cafes two times a month. So, masasunod is, I think, will be on June 13. So, see you. It's the same 3.30 in the afternoon. And we'll have several guests. And sana maimbitahan namin ulit kayo, Berna and Father, sa aming Mercy Cafe. And thank you so much for being here. Um, maybe for last words lang or message to our um, faithful are watching right now. Anong masasabi nyo? Let's start with Berna. Always, always pray because God is our, is our foundation and our rock. Yun yung wag natin kakalimutan. Hindi, hindi darating yung panahon na hayaan ng Panginoon na ganito tayo. Kasi naniniwala ako na he he always listens and he will answer in the per, in the perfect moment at ibibigay niya sa atin yon actually ngayon binibigay niya na sa atin iba yung iba yung peace iba yung pagmamahal iba yung uh, concern natin sa bawat isa and i think the lord is already changing the hearts of everyone and dun pa lang alam ko na masaya ang panginoon kasi unti-unti niya nang nababago tayo from the inside Father. Well, malinaw kung ano ang nawala sa ating dahil sa ECQ, dahil sa COVID, maraming nawala sa ating. I think ngayon na unti-unti tayo maglalagat tungo sa isang uh, new normal. Ang importante is ano ang dapat hindi mawala dahil may mga maraming bagay na natutunan natin dahil sa COVID pandemic na hindi sana mawawala. Ito yung pinag-usapan natin kanina. Ang daming tao ay natuto magsimba araw-araw. Ang daming families ay na, na, natuto magsimba bilang pamilya. Ang daming sa atin ay natuto mag, uh, makaroon ng napaka-simpleng buhay. Simpleng-simpleng buhay. Wala kang, ano, wala kang uh, milk tea, wala kang Starbucks, wala kang bagong damit, wala kang lahat. And yet, uh, meaningful. So, I think that there is a lot of learnings na huwag sanang itapon sa basurahan. There are a lot of things that we have to bring back to our new normal uh, that these were lessons that the Lord gave us. Uh, kung dati-dati, nothing can stop the economy. Like the economy was top one and nothing could stop. Well, this time, the whole world stopped. And, and the Lord showed us that there are more important things than malls and banks. And, uh, and we all realize that. We all realize that. Kaya sana kung anong natutunan, huwag, huwag nating iwan. Pagbalik, pagpunta sa bagong normal, bitbitin natin yung mga blessings. Because all these were blessings given to us. Yeah, so maraming maraming salamat, Father. And BB2, before we end, we'll just also like to announce this is a 
uh, a great um, uh, opportunity for us because for the past nine years, I think for the past nine years, Seath Pinoy has been doing their um, Catholic Social Media Summit and Catholic Social Media Awards, which is Father Peloni is one of the grand champions. <laughs> um, I think Seath Pinoy has been doing this for the past nine years na, na um, ginagawa every November. And I, uh, this is also a good time to announce that this year we're going to do it virtually. So yung 10th uh, year ng... Tama ba? 10th year. ng Catholic Social Media Awards, a uh, Catholic Social Media Summit um, will happen, sorry, it's the 9th year pala, will happen this um, November virtually. So, this, um, abangan niyo po yung mga news natin in the next coming week sa Youth Pinoy kung paano mangyayari ito. So, we will have, kung if we have like around 19 speakers, 20 speakers during the summit na Na Hindi virtual. Right now, virtually, we're going to have more speakers. So look out for that. Watch out for that. And uh, this is going to be something exciting for everyone who's watching us. We'll learn a lot and mas malaming topics na discuss. So thank you so much. And before we end, we would like to ask Father Filoni maybe to say a blessing and a prayer for all of us who are watching right now. Sure. Let us pray in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for the gift of life, for the gift of mission, for the gift of faith and family, for the gift of health. We ask you, Father, to give us the grace to care for the gift you give to us, to care dearly for the gift you give to us, and to share them with the people around us. We ask you, Lord, to protect everyone, especially we want to pray for those who put their lives at risk at the front line, for all doctors and nurses, technicians, janitors and janitress, people working in direct contact with the patients, the drivers of the ambulances, for all those who, who are trying to care for our communities, barangay officials, police, the military. We pray for everybody, Lord, that is doing their part and for each one of us who are doing our part by staying home starting on monday lord we have a new challenge help us to be wise give us the wisdom of the spirit to do what we have to do each one from our different professions and places to heal this land and we ask lord for the whole world we are all together in this and we know that you are with us and we know that you will never abandon us. We give you thanks for that. And we run to your embrace and we want to feel your peace and your security in our hearts. Lord, bless us this afternoon. Give us the grace to live with joy, with peace and purpose. And may Almighty God bless us all, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen.